when she hits the button. Oh, okay. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to go over today about picking up your puppy and what we send home and going over all of the sheets of paper. So there'll be a little bit of back and forth in order to show you what we're going over. This is Sydney. She's Lulu's mom. I'm sure you've seen many videos of Lulu over the past couple weeks and she's getting to go home today. And if you hear lots of laughter in the background, excuse that, that would be our children. You know, I have seven and she has three and we put them all together and they're having a really good time with Nerf guns. So excuse anything you hear in the background. So Lulu's gonna go home with a whole file of all of her information that you can add to or start your own. Um, this is the contract, we'll go over that last because it has lots of information. So since Lulu's going home a little bit later, she's had her second shot and is about due for her third shot. So puppies uh, have a whole series of shots in the beginning. This paper goes over each of the things that are in the vaccine and why you need a vaccine, why you need to vaccinate for it. Um, most people know about parvovirus, but we also do coronavirus, which looks a lot like parvo. Um, most of the time you have to test to know the difference. So, but this explains all of those things. And so she's had these first two shots. The other thing that goes over here is deworming. So she went to the vet at eight weeks old to have a clear fecal. And um, until you have her on a heartworm preventative or um, that includes deworming, that that is something that your vet will do at each of your appointments uh, until she is on a preventative. Um, so for heartworms, uh, it, where we live, which they live in Georgia, um, is in the same area. So our season with mosquitoes and fleas is February to November. Um, and so the heartworm preventative is typically year round. We recommend HeartGuard Plus. It's kind of the Benadryl version of been around forever. They've uh, had a lot of experience with it and seen how dogs do on it. Um, Trifexis has caused a lot of seizures in schnauzers, so we don't recommend that. Um, that's another one that covers your worms and heartworms, intestinal worms and heartworms. Um, so the plus part is just talking about covering those. A lot of them don't cover for whipworms and sometimes hookworms. So when you look at that, you'll wanna make sure that those are covered, whatever you're treating for, as well as her yearly vet exam, they should always do a fecal just to make sure there's no breakthrough of anything. As far as for fleas and ticks, because you have children like I do and they cuddle their dogs, I don't like the topical flea medication because I don't like my kid's face all in that. Just pesticides don't seem like a good idea. So we use the Soresto collar. It lasts for eight months. And where I talked about that our flea season is about eight months, it kind of works that they just need one a year. Um, and that will protect them from fleas and ticks. Every breeder has their own opinion on what they use. So I let people know what I use. You and your vet can make that decision together. Um, I did not have as much luck with some of the other options that were out there, as well as Brevecto is another one, And but Schnauzers have had a lot of reactions to that. They just have a sensitive system, hence pancreatitis and things like that. So those are all decisions you can make with your vet, but people ask what we use and what we do, and that's what that goes over. So this is her vaccine. So it has her date of birth on here, her description and her name. And so this is when they were given and this is what you'll take into your vet um, to let them know that she has had those shots. Since you are not local, most of this is not helpful to you. I still include it though, because it does talk about pet friendly places. So I recommend that if you plan on taking your dog out in public, that you do that before she's 16 weeks old because everything that they experience in their socialization period, they accept as normal. So the only thing is, um, like banks are a good option because a lot of dogs don't go into the bank, but they are welcome. Um, but Lowe's is another great place to take your dog. Just don't put her on the ground and don't put her in the car. Just hold her. Um, but it still gives her the experience of the sound of a car, the sound of the beeping of the cash registers, and all of those things that we don't realize are so overwhelming. Um, 
to them for their sensory issues of just, whoa, this is so much that they take in. Um, if you plan on taking her to the beach, find a sandbox so that she can walk in sand because that is a very strange sensation to a dog. Um, but in order, like through the first hundred days of their lives, you want them to meet about a hundred people. So I always recommend that you invite your friends over, come meet my new dog, invite your kids' friends over so that they meet other dogs and other people that you know like your friends you know like your friends Frenchies are vaccinated you wouldn't be concerned about them carrying parvo right. it's a great socialization for her um this is the vet that we use so sometimes they want to know um when she went and saw the vet that's who did her tail and all of those things this is the vet that we use so that's why that is highlighted so feeding instructions we've had a lot of discussions about food and and what we do so all of this goes over all of those things so the amount of food that she eats um, she's eating about a quarter cup uh, twice a day uh, as her weight increases as she gets older that will that obviously will increase the amount of food that she needs and of course the bag will give you based on her weight um, providing fresh water we talked about lick it bottles um, I'm a big fan of those because I love the schnauzer beards but I hate heat when they are wet and they are all over the place as well as they start to smell um, getting food and water and stuff so look at bottles keep that from happening and so all of my dogs use look at bottles they have experienced bowls um, around six weeks we will put a bowl in there with any of the puppies so that they do have experience looking out of a bowl um, but I don't leave bowls down for my dogs as you can see in here there are no water bottle no water bowls just water bottles everywhere less, less. yes less mess they can't flip them um, but this talks about um, all types of things with, uh, with food. So um, we do not use uh, canned wet foods. Um, when we give certain medications, we do use um, baby meat food because there's not a bunch of preservatives in it. There's not a bunch of chemicals in it. And so in order to get my dog to take something they don't want to, um, I do that uh, as well as my mom's um, because you are going to be breeding. So when I feed my mom's, I add that in the whole time that they're breastfeeding just to kind of keep their calorie count up and also right before they give birth. Um, so all of these things go over that. Um, as well as uh, this discusses, which I know that I don't have to worry about this with you, but I'm gonna say this for the video, um, how important it is not to feed them table food. So schnauzers are very prone to pancreatitis. They have very sensitive systems. They easily get diarrhea um, from, from some things that some dogs tolerate better, such as changing food and things like that. So with that said, if you just can't help it and you really wanna feed them from the table, things like Blueberries, watermelon. Watermelon is excellent if they're playing outside in the hot sun, just like it is for us, since it's almost all water, and that is very healthy. And we provide a list of all the human foods that they can have, um, as well as um, so. For the last two days, we've been giving her pumpkin, and we do this with all of our puppies because it helps firm up their stools. Because they're all puppies get loose stool when they go home because it's just such a culture shock. I mean, they've never been, I mean, we have, she has, because of the fact she's going home at 12 weeks versus eight weeks, she has been away from her mother. Um, but it's just a different house, different house, different smells, different everything. And just like for us, when we go on vacation, it sometimes messes with people's stomachs and you know, we get into stressful situations. It does the same thing for them. And so that's something that we, um, we encourage you. If you see that that's a problem for her after the, the first night that you can buy a can of pureed pumpkin. Make sure it's just pumpkin and not pumpkin pie filling. I had one mom <laughs> buy pie filling and she's like, oh my God, she's so sick. And I'm like, that's just so crazy. I just don't understand. I've never had that not work. So from our conversation, eventually she sent me a picture of the can and it was pie filling. I'm like, yes, you gave her a whole bunch of sugar. That would give her straight diarrhea. Yes, explosive diarrhea. I know what's wrong with your dog. She ended up having to go to the vet and get on diarrhea medication and it was just awful. So now I make sure I'm very clear. 100% pumpkin puree. Just the puree. Yeah, I felt so bad that I did not clarify that. So we send him home everyone potty training 101 on how to potty train your dog. Um, Lulu is doing really well with, with the pee pads. Um, the only time we have issues is if she's playing with the kids and the kids aren't paying attention to those signs, um, she will piddle in the floor. Uh, but 
you know, honestly, if you give me a bunch of water and run me around, I'd probably pee my pants yeah. too. But as far as if she has access to a pee pad, she's doing really well. And so that's normally what you see around 12 weeks. She, we, she has not not pooped on the pee pad for several weeks now. Like she's like, this is where I poop. I've got that down. Peeing, if the pee pad is available and everybody's doing their part, she is like 99%. She's, that is where I pee. So this goes over how to change from a pee pad to outside. Although I do love that our dogs are used to pee pads because living in the South, we have hurricanes and all of that. And so this past year when we had the big hurricane, I just set up a huge pen in my garage and put tons of pee pads down and all of my dogs just used, we just used that like the outside toilet. They just went out there and then I just changed the pee pads because I didn't want to go out in the hurricane. They didn't want to go out in the hurricane. <laughs> And so no, we can just avoid that. So yeah. using a pee pad and having them train to that is actually a really good thing. I've also, none of my dogs have ever had trouble not understanding going to the bathroom outside. And I get asked that a lot. Like, well, if you have them pee on a pee pad, do they think they pee in the house? No, I have not ever had a problem with them swapping back and forth um, because my moms, they swap back and forth the amount of water that they drink overnight. They almost never hold it all night, especially in the beginning. Uh, they have to use a pee pad. Um, they don't and I don't have any problem. They go right back to using the bathroom outside and they don't think that they should use the carpet The only thing with puppies is I had one family that were like they always pee on our bath mats and I'm like really I have never had that issue. We finally figured out their bath mats were stark white same color as a pee pad I thought they were the pee pads. So they they were just using them as pee pads and so um, when they stopped having white bath mats They didn't have any problems anymore. But at least it wasn't the carpet. That is true. You can the throw them You can throw them in the wash so, um, as it says on the bottom of our puppy potty instructions, uh, Dr. Ian Dunbar is who I follow. Um, I think his stuff is amazing. I've read all his books and that is where I based my, my, my program on. So between puppy culture and Dr. Ian Dunbar is kind of where I came up with all my ideas. A lot of people have asked where I came up with that because I am not a vet, so I cannot make recommendations on medical things or, and, and it's a gray area. So, to be very clear, all of my information that I pass on is from Dr. Ian Dunbar, and this was the first book of his that I read when I was just a pet owner before I was ever a breeder, and um, I have learned so much from, from him and from that book, and so that is where most of my stuff comes from, and so I include that in there so people know where I got that. The AKC puts this out um, about their new puppy owner checklist, so I include that for everybody. And then, uh, so Lulu's papers, um, one moment. Okay, I'm gonna cover up this number if you'll show this. Um, I'm covering up her number because that is her actual AKC number and we don't need that out on the internet. Um, but what it goes over is the breed of the dog, her, her date of birth, who mom and dad are, um, I'm the breeder and the litter owner. Um, and then this goes over uh, all the different parts you can get with your AKC uh, paperwork. Um, and then this is her color. So she is a black and silver. So this is the color. And then she will not have any, she doesn't have markings. So this will not be markings. And she is a female. And then, so what you will do, just need to make sure I'm covering up her number. Um, so I am transferring her, so I have signed here, and then you will put all of your information on here, and um, I, I do all of mine online. I don't actually mail them in, I just go online, and all the PIN numbers are on there for you to be able to do that. So you'll be able to put all this in, and then they mail them to you. So that is her, her papers. And then this is the contract. So there are two copies, so there's two originals. I'm going to have you read this one as I'm reading this one, okay. um, because this is the one that you will sign. I have already signed your copy, and this is what we'll work on with you. Okay. So um, her date of birth, um, her brother was a platinum salt and pepper, so we will fix that. Yeah, uh, I have one up, sorry. So bad. So she is black and silver, and she is a girl. That is right. Uh, and her mom and dad's names are right. Um, so on 120 2019, the described puppy, almost, has been sold as a pet to the buyer in accordance with the terms below with payment in full, the receipt of which hereby is acknowledged. We are so excited that you have chosen to love one of our miniature schnauzers as we have. 
Our schnauzers are raised in our home full of love. We are not a puppy mill. We do not overbreed our dogs. All of those decisions are made with our vet. We do not sell to pet shops, puppy mills, dog brokers, or flea markets. We feel it is our responsibility as breeders to be certain as possible that our puppies go to responsible, informed, loving homes. So these are all the parts that you are agreeing to. So number one, this dog is being sold with full breeding rights. That the puppy has been fed a premium dog food, pottery. Please read about and research different foods that you might consider changing to, as I truly believe that food will... Uh, that this food will talk any as well as the health and well-being of our fur babies come first and so that is where you can order it which we have already discussed the puppy will be provided with proper veterinary care grooming attention basic training love and adequate housing and containment at the buyer's expense for the rest of her life if abuse or neglect is suspected or can be determined by an unbiased third party such as the humane officer or veterinarian at any time on the part of the buyer the breeder reserves the right to reclaim the puppy and no money will be refunded to this buyer I have never had this happen. I know other breeders that have, but really have not, thank God. Um, so the, one of the reasons that this is in our contract um, about grooming specifically is that in order to have a hypoallergenic dog, which has hair, not fur, you end up having to have grooming. And so um, this is something that I have, long before these contracts are gone over with people that we have talked about way beforehand that they have to be groomed and so Lulu has been being groomed every four weeks since she was six weeks old and then she was uh, groomed again today and so that we do that with all of our puppies we groom them right before they go home so that the first time they're experiencing grooming is not after their socialization period is over at 16 weeks because you can't take them to a groomer until after they've had all their shots and if your groomer does not insist on all the shots find a new groomer so with that being said, we want to make sure that our puppies are pretty and that they are, have experienced that. We use electric toothbrushes to get them used to the vibrations and things like that, but um, that they will have to be groomed. There is no way around that. Uh, even if you keep them shaved down, they have to be shaved down at least five times a year. Um, so those are decisions that people make, but that is why that is in our contract about grooming. People have asked me why that's in there. So. That is why. Um, number four, that the puppy will be supervised whenever she is outdoors, especially if you don't have a fence in yard. Please be advised that these dogs are very precious and those that don't have one want one. And I have unfortunately heard of so many people that have lost their dogs to being stolen. Other breeders having their dogs stolen and other people. Um, Schnauzers are one of the top five dogs that are stolen. Uh, the last list I looked at, they were number two. They were right underneath French Bulldogs being number one. Um, the other reason that I say about watching them when they are outdoors is that people don't realize that as small as they are, they are hawk and owl food. So even if you take them out in the evening, owls have eaten them. Um, they will swoop down and they will just take off with them. Uh, one of my, uh, uh, Kimba Pringle had one of her puppies be scooped up. It wasn't, she had sold it. It was a pet of someone else and they were actually able to uh, beat the bird off and get the dog back because the dog was on a leash. But the dog still had horrible lacerations and puncture wounds and everything from a hawk. And that was out in California. Horrible hawks and vultures down there. Yeah, so I let people know when they're outdoors, they can never be outside by themselves. They should never be outside alone, um, but just to make sure you look up and around. And I've had people think I'm crazy for that and then message me later and tell me they are sorry because they noticed things in the air when they were looking. It's like, yeah, if you're not looking for it, you don't necessarily see it. Um, number five, that I would appreciate further updates and pictures throughout the puppy's lifetime so that she is able to continue to evaluate my breeding program and provide the best pets possible. Typically, there is a sixth um, clause on here that I do not include with people that have purchased breeding rights. And so um, if you've purchased breeding rights, it's a, it's a different... Um, it's different. So if you go on our website and you were looking over the contract and you were wondering why clause number six is not in there on this video, that is why. Um, so the health guarantee. This I am not going to read aloud because an attorney wrote it, so it is super wordy. Um, I know that you have read it before because you've gone over the contract. Uh, I had everybody go online and read it prior to creasing the deposit. But this goes over what exactly our health guarantee covers and what it does not. The really short version is that it is to cover genetic problems, such as if Lulu were to have a massive heart murmur that um, is it was caused genetically, 
um, that then we would uh, we would make that right. And so you are welcome to go on to happilyeveraftersnauzers.com and read through all of this. So this last part is what I am agreeing to. So the puppy is guaranteed to be free of illness, parasite, injuries, and life-threatening congenital disease at the time of sale to the best of my knowledge. That I assume no responsibility or expense incurred by the buyer for illness or injury once the puppy leaves the premises at the time of sale. That a complete health record, vaccination, and care given to your puppy, a puppy care package, and a toy and blanket with mother's scent and educational materials will be provided to the puppy at the time the puppy leaves here. So this blanket, um, because she has already gotten past being with her mother, um, we have had her sleep with it with the two puppies that she was also with so that when she goes home and they put her to bed tonight that she is not having smells that she is not familiar with surround her. And then she also, her favorite um, toy, if you have followed us at all, is a spider. And that spider is going home with her. Um, the blanket, we have people save for at night so that um, it, the smell lasts longer. And then the toy also smells like them and their, and their litter mates or friends, whichever the case is for you guys, it's friends. Um, it smells like that so that they have that during the day. So they have both items to go home with them. Um, and that you may contact me at any reasonable time with any questions uh, concerning her for the rest of her lifetime. And I have people from my very first litter that I'm still in contact with and answer questions from grooming to uh, questions about um, certain toys, treats, food, and things like that. And I'm always happy to answer those questions. Even if you don't have anyone of my puppies, you're welcome to ask. Um, and then we both agree that this contract is binding to both parties, to their heirs, successors, and, and the signs that time is of the essence and this puppy was born and raised at Happily Ever After Schnauzers. And that by signing below, the buyer acknowledges that she has read and understand the terms of the contract and has been given ample opportunity to ask questions. And both parties acknowledge that there are no other warranties or representations with respect to the puppies other than the ones set forth herein. So I need to get white out so I can fix her color. Really, she's a female. She is a yeah, female she... and it's the right birthday Michelle. and parents and all of that. Um, so, um, so then this one I have signed. And so this one is what will go in your paperwork. And then, I think it's in my purse. I think the white out's actually in my purse. Um, I'm pretty sure it's in my purse. Can you go grab my purse? Yeah, is it in your room? Nope, nope it's right there. And because uh, I need a pen as well. And there are pens in my purse. And then I will initial it, and you can initial it so nobody thinks that it was changed. Although it's all filmed and on the internet. Yeah. Um, it's right in that pocket. This one? Mm -mm. One of the little ones on the sides. I have Sorry, it together. I'm so together. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought that was one of mine. Oh no. That's... My kids stumbled on for. So she's just changing the color. Because yep. I forgot to change that from the last contract. Yep, her brother was. Where's Lulu? I Michelle, think, where's Lulu? I think Cece. Oh, never mind. Bring her. Okay. Here. So, if you will, date, so the date and the month and the year, and then sign here, print, address, and phone number. Make sure you shift that because that's private. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not, let's not put that all in the internet for you. What is the date? Today is the 20th. Hey Cece, can you show off your show off your puppy? I don't know if you want her on film. That uh, that's fine. So put her on film. This is Lulu. This is Miss Lulu. Pretty girl, show off your pretty face. Hi. <laughs> She's you looking at my coupons. No, you can't have you my can't. coupons. I'm sorry. She's got to afford all these treats. I know, right? Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> Is she already your buddy? 
Have you bonded? Mm hmm. She loves me more than my mother. She's claimed her. Just like she didn't know. Just like your bearded dragon. Oh Adventures of Bubbles and Lulu. I can see it now. It's going to be interesting. I'm just going to end up bonding. The dog and the lizard will end up bonding. Well, thank you very much. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send us a message, as well as if you would like and follow Happily Ever After Schnauzers to continue to get updates on our adventures.